Hey kindergarten, I hope you're ready to start your Monday today. It's the last Monday of the 2020 school year. So let's get started with some math today. Okay, so here I have a tin frame with some counters on it and I want you to take a look at it and tell me what number do you see? What number do you see? Okay, so when you looked at this 10 frame, you may have figured out this number just by looking at it. You may be pretty good with your 10 frames and be able to subitize really quickly already and be able to see that this is 12 without having to count or anything. So that may be one way that you got the answer. Another way you were able to see that this was 12, you may have realized this is a whole 10 frame right here. So this is 10, it's all filled in and then just add one, two, two more to it. So you may have been able to look at this and say 10, 11, 12. You may have looked at this 10 frame and actually counted each counter like this. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So you may have counted each one to figure out that this is 12. What other way may you have realized that this was 12? You may know your doubles in kindergarten and you may have been able to see in your mind that this right here is a double and this is a double. If you split it kind of like, I know it's kind of hard to see if I put my fingers there, but if you split it like this, look, on this side there are how many? One two, three, four, five, six. And then you may have noticed this other side has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you may have seen a double in your head and you may have been able to go, oh, well six plus six is 12. So you may have been able to realize it was 12 like this. There are lots of other ways that you could also recognize this number as 12. But keep practicing looking at those 10 frames and being able to answer quickly about what number they show. We'll work on some more tomorrow. Let's go ahead and look at our word problem for today. Let me draw out our apps check. Okay, here is the first, or our word problem for today. Let's read it together. Jane had five gifts. She gave two of the gifts away. How many gifts remain? Okay, so let's think about this word problem again. This time, let's read it, and we're going to be thinking about what question are we being asked. Let's read it again and listen for the question. Jane had five gifts. She gave two of the gifts away. How many gifts remain? What question are we being asked? We're being asked to solve how many gifts remain? See, this ends with a question mark here. So that means that we're being asked a question. This is what we need to solve. How many gifts remain? Now let's read this word problem one more time and this time let's listen for important numbers that we may hear. Ready? Jane had five gifts. What's important in that sentence that will help us to solve and answer the question? Five, right? It tells us how many gifts she started with. Let's listen to the next sentence. She gave two of the gifts away. What numbers or words are important in that sentence? Well, two. And then also this word gave and away. If you give away something, are you getting more or are you going to have less? If you're giving away, you're going to be getting less of something. You're going to be subtracting. So these numbers, gave, er, not numbers, these words gave and away are going to help us to know that we're going to need to probably subtract when we solve this problem. So let's move on to our plan. Okay, so 
So we've got to figure out add or subtract. I'm going to draw a part, part, whole mat here to help us. Okay, so do we know how many gifts Jane started out with? Jane had five gifts. Okay, so she started with five. That was the total number that she had. And then she gave away two of the gifts. So she, we know one of the parts, one of the parts is two. We're trying to solve how many gifts remain, how many are left. So we know the whole and we know one of the parts. We need to solve the other part. Whenever you know a whole and only one of the parts, you have to subtract to get the other part. And just like when we were reading the problem and we thought about, oh, okay, she gave away. So that means you're subtracting. So we're going to have to subtract in this problem. And we started with five. She gave away two. So five minus two equals, or we can write this number sentence like this. Five minus two equals Either way is correct. Okay, let's solve the problem. I think today I'm going to solve the first time using my little counter bears. Okay, so she had five gifts to start with. So here's one, two, three, four, five. All right, she had those five gifts. And she gave away two. So let's make sure this is five. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Now she gave away two. So we need to take away two. One, two. How many are left? Let's count. One, two, three. Okay, so it looks like three gifts remain. By the way, this word remain, that's a big word. Remain just means how many are still there. So how many gifts does she still have or how many remain? Three. Let's try solving the problem a different way to check and make sure we got it. This time I'm going to draw a picture. Okay, so Jane had five gifts. One, two, three, four, five. She had five gifts. She gave two of the gifts away. So to show that they're going away, she gave them away. I'm going to X them out. So she gave away two. One, two. How many gifts remain? How many are still there? One, two, three. So we have checked our work two different ways and gotten the same answer. So we know for sure five minus two equals Three. And we can answer the question now in the problem. How many gifts remain? Three gifts. All right, let's move on now to our lesson for today. So last week in kindergarten, you talked about 2D shapes. This week, you're going to be learning about 3D shapes. And I have a little chart here for us. I'm going to have to fold it, though, so it'll fit all on my table. Okay, today we're just going to be talking about the name of each shape, and then as the week goes on, we'll learn a little bit more information about the shapes. Okay, so let me get out our first shape for today. Okay. Okay. Here's the first shape that we're going to be talking about in kindergarten. Now, before we talk about this shape, remember last week we talked about 2D shapes. And we learned that a 2D shape is a two-dimensional shape. When a shape is 2D, it's just flat. You could, like, slap it with your hands. It's flat. Like this piece of paper is flat, like a 2D shape. Okay? It only has length and width. This week, we're going to be talking about 3D shapes, though. 3D shapes, this big word 3D, stands for three-dimensional. Three-dimensional. And when a shape is three-dimensional, you can't basically clap with it in your hands, okay? 
When it's three-dimensional, it has length, width, and height. So it stands out, okay? If um, you have a piece of paper, it's just completely flat, right? This is 2D. But when you have 3D, it's an actual object that stands out. 3D shapes you can touch and hold. Um, you can feel exactly what they feel like. 2D shapes are just flat on the paper. So this week we're talking about 3D shapes. Now this is the first shape we're going to learn about. I have a larger version of it here and a smaller version of the shape here. You may find this shape um, around your house. There are a ton of these. Um, I can think of like cans. If you have cans in your pantry, cans are the shape of this shape here. Um, what else? Maybe like the tops of binoculars or a pole, like a flagpole or something like that. So there are tons of these shapes. Do you know what this shape is called? So this shape here is a cylinder. This is called a cylinder. Now, you may think that this shape starts with what letter? What do you think? Cylinder. It sounds like it starts with an S, right? But cylinder actually starts with a soft C. So here's how you spell cylinder. All right, this shape is a cylinder. And we're going to talk more about the different um, important vocabulary words about this shape later on this week. But today, we're just going to talk about what it looks like. So this is a cylinder. It can roll. You can stack cylinders on top of each other. It can also slide. So these are cylinders. They look like... Um, most of the time when I think of a cylinder, I think of a can. So I'm going to draw a can. Um, it may have like a little label on it or something like that. But they look kind of like cans. A cylinder can be big like this one and wider. Or it can be skinny and smaller. It doesn't matter as long as it has the two circle faces or surfaces on the top and bottom, and it is a curved surface around it. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. But this is a cylinder. Okay, let's talk about our next shape. This is our next shape that we're going to talk about. Take a look at this shape. This is another 3D shape. Do you know what the name of this shape is? This is a cone. A cone. A cone. Here's what the cone looks like. When you see this cone, what do you think of? What do you think of when you see this cone? What does it look like to you? To me, a cone always reminds me of an ice cream cone, just like this. Now, it has to be one of the ice cream cones that is kind of pointed on the end like that. Otherwise, it's not really a cone. I know the cones at Dairy Queen, they're called a cone, but they're not really in the true cone shape. Okay, so it reminds me of an ice cream cone. It kind of also reminds me maybe of like if you have um, ever been out driving, or not you driving, but your parents driving or riding the bus driving and you see these on the road like traffic cones. It may remind you of a traffic cone. Or I know sometimes like if you're playing a sport, you'll lay these out on the ground and kick the ball around them like that. Those are also cones. See, they are in the shape of this 3D shape called the cone. All right, the next shape that we're going to be talking about is this one. What's this shape called? You may say that this shape is called a ball. It does look like a ball, but that's not its big fancy name. 
its big fancy name is actually a sphere. Sphere. Sometimes people will accidentally call this a spear by mistake, but it's a sphere. There's a F sound after the S. It's actually a PH that makes that sound. Sphere. So this is a sphere. Sphere. And a sphere looks like a ball. Um, it could be any type of ball, really, as long as it's round, like the sphere. It could be a baseball. Um, it may remind you of a basketball. All balls except a football are in the shape of a sphere. Okay, so this is a sphere. The last shape in kindergarten that you're going to be learning about is this shape, and I have two of them, a larger and a smaller one. Do you know what this shape is called? It looks like a box, doesn't it? It's not called a box, though. This shape is called a cube. So you spell cube like this. Cube. Okay, this is a cube. Um, you may say that it looks like a box. And we're going to talk about the cube a little bit more tomorrow because there are certain things that make it a cube that are really important. But it does kind of look like a box, maybe an ice cube. It can be small or it can be large as long as it follows these rules that we'll talk about tomorrow. It is called a cube. Here, I'll draw a little puddle around it to make it look like ice is melting. There we go. Okay. So, the shapes that we're going to be discussing this week that are 3D shapes, remember we have cube, sphere, cone, and cylinder. So, we'll learn more about these as the week goes on. I'll see you next time. Bye.